Hello, my name is Tom Stiles, and this is Tom's Radio Room Show number 230. I've gotten a couple of questions about my antennas, cables, and connectors. So I thought I would give you a little insight. Bearing in mind, I am no expert. So if you see I make a mistake, please comment, and I'll put a correction in this video. Anyway, one of the good place, one of the good place, one of the good places to get um, cable, coax cable for your antennas, for your radios, is Universal Radio. Now, there's several other places, but this one, this one has been around for quite a while, and the beauty of this website is they give you a lot of good pictures so you can get an idea of what you're getting and some of the uh, comments I've gotten there's some confusion about adapters and cables so I'm gonna try to give you some ideas hints and hopefully I don't make too many dumb mistakes so here we go so here's their web page and you pick uh, online catalog and then we're interested first we're interested in cable coax and wire so let's go there and then we're interested in coax cable by the foot okay let's look at this nice really nice table uh, all the and this is the confusion part. All the kinds of cables there are that you can buy. And this is this is just the ones they carry. You know, there's and this is for uh, radio equipment. So it doesn't have cables for like your internet uh, network or anything like that. Or yeah, it doesn't. I don't know if it has any cables for um, stereo hookups and stuff like that. But anyway, it does have a good selection of cables to connect your antenna, your outside antenna, to your radio. And the kind of most common, common, common ones are RG58, which is a lighter cable. It's uh, similar to the cable that you have from your cable TV provider. Um, but it it's a little more lossy is the word a little more lossy you lose the signal a little more with this cable as compared to rg8 and R rg8 and rg8x rg8 is a real heavy stuff and that's what i usually use it's kind of stiff and it's pretty heavy but it gives you the best um low loss in um capability so that your signal does not get lost from your antenna getting to your radio. Now the other kind of in the middle is the, the newer RG8X and you can see from these pictures here's the RG8 it's pretty thick. Here's RG8 it's almost as thin I'll call it small diameter as the RGA RG58. And you can see if you go over here, I love this table. You can see here's actually here's the uh, uh, outside di diameters right there to give you a feel for it. But what you can also see is you can see the price per foot. And you can see the 58 is 24 cents compared to the uh, RGA X. This is the black, which is 36 cents. And then if you go to RG8, which is what I prefer, it's pretty, nowadays this stuff's pretty expensive. And the reason, one of the reasons being is the RG8 has a lot of copper in it. And which makes uh, the attenuation of the cable lower. But, of course, the price of copper nowadays, you're going to pay for it. So anyway, so that's kind of the cables you can choose from. Um... Probably the uh, kind of middle-of-the-road RG8X would be one where you'd want to go. 
but you could get away with the RGA 58 if it's not too long, if your run is not too many feet, because the, the loss is based on how long the cable is. Make sense? Okay. Now, there is, speaking about attenuation, they have another table called an attenuation table. Tells you, you know, how much loss you're going to have with uh, the various cables. And it gives the attenuation in decibel loss of signal per 100 feet. And then it gives you a table that shows you the loss at certain frequencies. Because as you go up in frequency, your loss or attenuation of the cable is going to increase. So for shortwave, for instance, that would be um, down 30 megahertz or lower. And then if you're using it for your scanner, you could go as high as somewhere between 450 and 1,000 megahertz. If you're listening on a scanner, for instance, some of your local utilities are up at 800 megahertz. So you can see, let's just check... Um, RG58, for instance, at 30 megahertz, the loss is 2.5 decibel. And when you get up to 800 megahertz, it's 20, about 20 decibel. So you're really losing a lot of signal when you use this radio, when you use this cable. So what I will be doing, I showed you my new scanner antenna. I will be using the RG8, which is, you know, a lot better. It's about one-third the loss of RG58, but it's going to cost me more. And for some reason, I guess they don't recommend using RG8X at that higher frequency. They do show it at 450. But if, we're, if you're interested in shortwave... This is the, uh, the numbers you want to look at. So 58 is 2.5 dB. Now realize that uh, this is somewhat related to when you're transmitting. And, of course, we're only receiving. So these numbers probably won't be as high when you're receiving versus transmitting. Again, I'm no expert. So at 30 megahertz, the RG58 is 2.5, and the RG8X is 2, and they don't have a number for the RG8. I don't understand that, but at 50 megahertz, it's only 1.2. So you can kind of see it, the more expensive and the heavier the cable the lower the attenuation that the cable causes. So the lower your signal will be when you get when it gets to your radio. So you want to go for you know the lower loss, the more expensive, the more heavy. But you can get away with for receiving something like RG58. I would kind of lean towards Staying in the middle road and go with RG8X. Okay, now let's go back and we'll go back. And now we're going to look at, um, let's see, we're going to need to find parts, the connectors. Now, um, those, um, most of their cables you can get with connectors or without, and that'll increase the price or decrease the price because it costs more to put for the connectors and to have them put on but it makes it a lot easier on you because you don't have to uh, hook up install the connectors but the advantage is is you can measure out exactly how many feet because you want to keep that cable as short as possible so if you only need uh, 27 feet and you by say 50 feet because that's kind of the standard increment you can cut that off and, and you not not run that extra i lost the math 23 feet um, that's going to cause the loss that you don't want to have 
Okay, so much for that little synopsis. Okay, let's look at connectors. And this is the typical kind of connector you will get on cables that are prefabricated with connectors for the RG8 and probably the RG8X. Now, the uh, RG58 will have the small connectors, as you, I don't see one in here, as you've uh, probably seen on your TV connection to your cable provider. Okay, now, if you have a, this is the kind of connectors I have. I have a PL259 connector at each end of my cables, which, like I said, is RG8. But, some radios, the the amateur radios for uh, amateur radio operators, they typically have the, a connector on the back of the radio that accepts this connector. So there's no conversion required. But your shortwave portable, especially radios, don't. They will have... Either, and I'll go to the other page, to adapters. They will have, and I'll come down here. For instance, they will have this H eighth inch mini plug. And uh, if you saw my show a couple of days ago when I was using my Sanjian, that's the type of connector you need to plug in an external antenna. But if your cable, your coax cable, for instance, is RG8, it will have that 259 connector on it. So you need this adapter to go from the 259 to the eighth inch plug that plugs into the radio. So that's how I accomplish that. So if you if you saw me, my show, that is the adapter I was using. Now, ideally, you don't want to use adapter because this causes loss of the signal too when it goes to these adapters. Um, but it makes it easier to use adapters than to go cutting connectors off and rewiring all that stuff. Another um, connector, and see if I can find it. Don't know if they have it here or not. Yeah, this, my... Uh, Grundig 750 has this F-type connector on it. So I have one of these adapters for that same coax cable going to my outside antenna to hook it up to the... Um, oh, I take that back. Wrong, wrong, erase, backwards, go back. No, it doesn't. It has this one right here, the... Grundig 750 has a B and C connector for the external app antenna. So you need, so I need this adapter from 239 to B and C. And we could just do a view of that. So there's a nice big picture of that. So this screws into my uh, antenna coax connector. And this screws into the radio. In this case, the Grundig 750. So anyway, I just thought I'd you know try to clear this up a little bit. You know, I obviously made one mistake, probably made more, but uh, hopefully uh, this is of some helpful information. Like I say, this is a pretty good place to get adapters and stuff like this. You used to be able to get these adapters at Radio Shack, but now they don't carry very many adapters. They might have the two that I'm just talked about because they are very popular and used a lot and that's uh, uh, this guy right here and the one up here wherever it went where did it go where did it go where did it go and this one right here so they might have those two but if they don't you can also order them from universal radio i looked for 20 minutes on amazon and they don't have a very good selection. And I, <coughs> excuse me, could not find either of those adapters. So uh, that's the show for today. If 
you enjoyed my show, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to my shows. I'd appreciate that. We're up to about three, 1,350 subscribers. And we're going to have a giveaway when we get 1,500. So anyway, that's the show for today. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.